Today we're going to look at how pipelines and other related style of functions work. So we've got a simple test function here where we're going to go ahead and we're going to create uh, a mathematical um, solution. So we're basically taking uh, an input number and then giving you the output. So if we put 4 in, we get a total of 4 out. We put 4 and 9, uh, sorry, 4 and 5 in the array, we get 9 out. Um, and so on and so forth. So that is a basic function that works very well. Now what we'd like to do is be able to use this in a pipeline. So we put the numbers in the pipe and then get an export. So the first problem we encounter is that it tells us that's just not possible. So why is this not possible? Well, the answer is very simple. We haven't con built the conditions. We haven't said that this parameter is possible to pipe. So that's a simple fix. We go over, we change our parameter to values from pipeline, and then we test our function again. So we now have the behavior that we should be able to take the parameters from the pipeline. So we'll, we'll do a quick test to prove that our function is working normally. So we have our multiplication from our array. That's excellent. Now we're going to try the same again, but this time from the pipe. Now this will work, but we have the unexpected behavior. So I'm pretty certain with our math that if we put one and three in, we are expecting four as the output, not three. Um, and we can try this with a few variations with uh, points, decibels and other things. But the point is, it's not giving us the output we expect. And why is it not giving us the output we expect? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Um, it's taking the last number. So you can see as an example, if I put the one, three, nine, and only the nine was processed. So the reason for this is because it's not taking all of those values and then processing them correctly. So using the begin, process, and end, we can say we're going to collect those values, we're then going to process those values, and then we're going to output them all at once. So same basic functionality, just processing in a different way. So let's do this and see how that performs in terms of functionality. So we have again our beginning regular test, we put in the 1 and the 3 and we get a 4. Awesome. So base function works fine. Now let's try it with a pipe. So we'll put a 1, a 3, a 5, and a 4. So theoretically speaking, we should get 10, right? So we do a total and we have 10. And why? Because we're now processing that chunk of code all at once. So rather than having these values run individually or just the last one being taken from the array, we're in fact processing all of them. So we're beginning the process. Now since process is the only part that's required and beginning and end are not, let's see what happens if we just had the process in the function. So same principle, um, just using the mandatory process and let's see how that behaves. So if we have a one and we have a five, we have six. Yep, basic function works as it has pretty much every time up until now. And we can do the same with piping. So let's do some piping and see how that responds. So we should have seven as our output. And we don't. We have a one and we have a six. We actually have two outputs. So what's happened here is processing has allowed us to take the numbers, but instead of processing them as a total, we're processing them individually. So this is where the beginning and end function come in handy. So the beginning basically stores all the values ready to get started. So it's taking all of them in processing them and then the end is defining where we put them out and that's the behavioral differences when you're writing um, a function and you're expecting pipes to be used now hopefully this explains it if not let me know um, and i'll try to do a follow-up video in more detail